In the realm of MVM, Demonai is a damage dealer that buffs himself by killing robots to gain a short critical boost, dealing large amounts of crit damage while staying alive by continuously killing additional robots. He shares a similar role with Pyro, clearing large crowds of robots at close range and dealing very good damage against tanks. However, they're both very different. Pyro deals damage from their flamethrower that bypasses targets allowing for easier wave clearing. On the other hand, Demonite's damage is entirely synced with targets, so it'll take him a lot longer to clear many robots. However, Demonite deals damage in bursts, which allows him to help deal with targets that depend on a damage threshold, such as uber medics, and under the right conditions, he can help kill medics without popping their uber charges, making him a suitable medic killer. Because of this high damage he can deal, he can kill a single robot very quickly and can trigger his healing constantly as he gets more kills. Unfortunately, this is pretty much where Demonite's advantages ends. The only way to deal damage is by getting up close, and in some moments, it's extremely hard to do so without dying. He also has to deal with many robots that can easily counter him. Things like explosive knockbacks, slowing effects, and even robots that use a battalion's backup can render him useless. All of these shortcomings lead to the next question. How do you make Demonite good in MVM? Well, let's find out what his best loadout is. Let's start with Demonite's primary slot. The booties and bootlayer give an extra health boost, and with a shield equipped, he gets extra turning radius as well as bonus move speed. In addition, melee kills will grant 25% refill on his charge meter. These bonuses benefit Demonite greatly, and as such, his grenade launches will be discarded, as well as the base jumper says he won't be able to make use out of any of them. Demonite has three shields for his secondary slot. The charge and charge, splendid screen, and the titan. Turner. All shields give resistances to explosive and fire damage, with the Charger Targe having the most and the TIE Turner having the least. The extra recharge rate for the Splendid Screen is not really enough to warrant the lower resistances it has compared to the Charge and Targe, and the TIE Turner suffers issues with his main downside in MVM, where he will be taking damage 99% of the time, and he can only mini crit after charging. So the best shield for Demonite will be the Charge and Targe to increase his survivability and for that critical boost at the end of the charge. Now, onto the melee slot. The bottle, Caber, and the Pain Train are inferior options compared to the stores that he has available. The Persian Persuader and the Claydomore's bonuses contribute primarily to Demonite's charge meter. They are decent stores on their own, but they are surpassed by better options. This leaves us down to three swords, Islander, Skull Cutter, and the Zatoichi. The Zatoichi grants 50% health on kill. If you're using the shoes, that is equivalent to about 100 health on kill. A unique bonus of this sword is that it can overheal Demonite past his max health. However, this bonus can be less valuable as more money is available to Demonite. Nonetheless, it can be a great sword to use if Demonite doesn't have a lot of money. The Skull Cutter has a damage bonus in exchange for less move speed, but unlike other swords, it can deal random crits. This is an excellent option against giants and tanks where Demonite needs an extra DPS. However, it hinders his mobility against targets that are faster than him, lowering his crowd clearing capabilities. Still, like the Zatoichi, it is another sword that is inexpensive to invest in thanks to its starting damage bonus, so it's not bad to use this early game. This leaves us with the Islander. It has the downsides of lesser health, however, it can collect heads on kill. For every head collected, Demonite gains 15 additional health and 8% extra speed. This can stack up to 4 heads in total, granting him a total of 235 max health and 40% extra move speed, similar to the speed of a scout. Despite the higher investment needed compared to the Zatsuichi and the Skull Cutter, the Islander is the best sword for Demonite for the stacking bonuses alone. It enhances his ability to crowd clear and it allows him to move around the map much faster without relying on their shield. Now that we covered Demonite's available weapons and which are the best to use, we can now discuss Demonite's available upgrades. Demonite swords will come with damage upgrades, which will only show if you equip a shield on Demoman. This upgrade is important to his kit, but can actually be a money trap in waves where upgrading it won't really make a difference. We'll discuss about the importance of damage later. For now, let's look at his other upgrades. Freedom Kill is a unique upgrade available to Demoman, but is also available to Spy. Each upgrade grants 2 seconds of critical boost up to a total of 4 seconds. For Demonite, this is the most essential part of his gameplay in MVM, and it has to be purchase first before anything else. Without it, his damage output drops extremely hard and would essentially be dead weight on your team. Health on kill grants 25 health for every kill you get, up to 100 health on kill when this upgrade is maxed. This is also a must buy for Demonite unless you're running half set to Ichi. Demonite will always be taking damage when fighting robots, so he'll need all the healing he can get. Attack speed increases the speed of your sword swings. Very straightforward and worth investing early to mid game to maintain crits and healing. Moving on to the shields, you only get two upgrades, shield recharge rate and push force. The shield has a base cooldown of 12 seconds. Each point of recharge increases by 100%, allowing Demonite to charge more frequently. One point reduces it to 6 seconds, 2 points to 4 seconds, 3 points reduces it to 3, and 4 points reduces it to 2.4 seconds. Push Force is another upgrade you can get, reducing knockback up to 90% for 100 credits each. Definitely a must buy later in the waves where knockback can become a real issue. Now the boot like- oh. 
Well, I guess I guess that one I just didn't really have any. Moving on to his body upgrades. Like other classes, resistances are situational depending on the wave, so you have to juggle between them and your weapons. Though you may want to lean towards bullet resistance since Demonite doesn't really have any. Health regen isn't that important. You already have health on kill and you need the healing to be very quick. Move speed is an option, but you can avoid this if you're running the Islander. Plus, you can also invest in shield recharge rate instead. Jump height is a situational upgrade that can help Demonite's vertical mobility. It can help cover more distances when charging mid-air and it unlocks more shortcuts for Demonite meant to move around. This upgrade isn't needed for optimal play, but if you have the extra cash, one point of jump height is good enough. Now for his canteens. The only canteen worth using is the Ubercharge canteen, which grants 5 seconds of Ubercharge per use. Do your best not to buy these at all. They're completely non-refundable and the cost per use quickly adds up. The only time you should buy these are on waves in the late game, where it can literally be impossible to fight some robots. Obviously anything goes in the last wave of the mission, but outside of that, you should always max out your resistances before ever touching these. That's all the upgrades available to Demonite. But we need to go over the damage upgrade that we haven't really covered in depth. And to do that, we need to discuss about damage breakpoints. A sword with no damage bonuses deal with 65 base damage, 88 on mini crit, and 195 on crit. Regarding crit damage specifically, it can one-shot 6 of the 9 standard robots. The engineer bot can't be one-shotted here, because in MVM he either has 275 health or 500 health. It's impossible to tell the variants apart because MVM missions always mixes up their health numbers, so assume you need more than 2 crit swings. A steel gauntlet has 900 health but takes double melee damage. They will need 3 crit swings to die. Unfortunately, 195 damage is barely enough to kill a single soldier when he's at max health. This can be avoided if they had taken damage beforehand, but without nearby teammates doing so, it can hinder Demonite's performance. However, things start making a difference once we get the first damage up. The sword will now deal with 81 base, 110 mini crit, and 244 on crit. We can now kill a soldier in one single crit swing now, but Heavy will still need two crit swings to be killed. The same goes for Steel Gauntlets as well, where Demonite will be dealing 488 crit damage. The new base damage is enough to kill a medic in two normal hits, preventing them from using Ubu Charge. But be careful not to land a mini crit, because it will force him to pop. This puts us on par with the Skull Cutter's 20% damage bonus, where we will now start comparing. It deals 78 base, 105 mini crit, and 234 crit. The difference here is negligible, with the only concern being that he has a shorter window to kill medics in two swings. Let's move on to the next damage upgrade. Getting damage 2 on a sword will put it at 98 base, 132 mini crit, and 293 crit. This allows medium robots like Pyro and Demoman to be killed in two normal swings. But like with Soldier at base level damage, it leaves Heavy at a minuscule amount of health with 1 crit swing. If we get damage 1 on Skull Cutter, it will get 94 base, 127 mini crit, and 283 crit damage. There are no differences in breakpoints besides leaving the Heavy bot with slightly more health. Let's get damage level 3 on a regular sword. It will now deal 114 base, 154 mini crit, and 341 crit damage. Heavy can now be killed with one single crit swing. However, Demonite can no longer kill medics before they pop if he hits them with normal damage. Instead, you have to deal mini crits in order to kill them in one swing. Unfortunately, this is not the case for the Skull Cutter when it's upgraded to damage 2. It deals 111 base, 149 mini crit, and 332 crit damage. Medic would only have 1 health remaining, and as a result, their uber will activate. Demonite alone would have to land a shield bash on a medic before executing him in one swing. Damage level 4 is the last upgrade for the sword. It can deal 130 base, 176 mini crit, and 390 crit damage. Scouts, snipers, and spies would now be killed in one normal hit, and pyros and demos can now be killed instantly with mini crits. Skull Cutter's damage maxes out at 3 levels, dealing 127 base, 171 mini crit, and 380 crit damage. Unfortunately, he cannot mini crit pyros and demos in one mini crit swing, but scout snipers and spies can still be killed in one hit. Hopefully, this information about breakpoints can help you understand the damage upgrade a bit more and how much you should invest in for a wave. Now, let's actually map out how we should upgrade Demo Knight. Get 1 crit on kill upgrade first, then try to get 4 health on kill. Though if you can only get 3 points of health on kill, it can be alright. If you're using the half Satsuichi, you can safely skip this upgrade. If there are a lot of soldiers or steel gauntlets, try to prioritize 1 point of damage bonus. Skip if you're using the skull cutter. However, if you aren't able to or there are little to no soldier bots, you can invest in shield recharge rate or push force resistance. Get 2 points of attack speed, or if there are a lot more soldiers in the next wave, then get the first point of damage bonus if you haven't already. Then max out push force resist and have at least 1 shield recharge rate by mid game. Alright, try to max out attack speed and then crit on kill. You can avoid maxing crit on kill if you're using the skull cutter, but I would still recommend it. You can stay at damage level 1 if you need to invest in resistances, but if not, then you can proceed to get damage 2. If there are a lot more heavies coming, try to get damage level 3. However, you now will need to land crit swings on medics to successfully kill them without popping uber, or 
mini crit swing with a regular sword, or with a skull cutter, a shield bash, and then a swing. You can upgrade shield recharge rate to level 2 if you need it, but it's not necessary. Finally, towards the late game, you can try to get the final damage bonus upgrade. You'll be able to kill scouts, snipers, and spies with one normal attack, and being able to kill medics with a mini crit from a skull cutter, which can be a quality of life. After that, all credits can go to body upgrades, or uber canteens if you need them. Obviously, the way you choose the upgrade will depend greatly on the mission's payout as well as its structure, but in the most ideal conditions, this is the best upgrade route for Demo Knight. Alright, let's get into playing as Demo Knight. Demo Knight's gameplay loop is heavily reliant on critical hits and staying alive while slaughtering robots. The best way to start doing this is by positioning yourself at the correct distance relative to your target and timing the shield charge so you'll land a critical hit. Once Chris has been activated, your priority is to kill anyone that dies in one single hit. Prioritize any mechs on the field first if there are any. Then kill any bot that can be killed in two swings, and then after that, any other robot. You can help support with killing giants as well, but I would only recommend doing this with a full crit boost. You also want them to be distracted as well so it can deal with damage safely. The best giants to target are the ones that are isolated. If you're the target, you'll need to circle strafe around them to avoid getting hit. The more movement speed you have, the easier it is to perform this. If you couldn't land a kill with a crit swing, lock onto the target you recently damaged and kill them quickly before your teammates do. Alternatively, you can wait for teammates to damage the robot enough before going for the last hit. But this can be very hard to do if you don't have enough experience in MVM as a demo knight, and it's also very inconsistent. It'll take a while to recharge your shield if you're not killing anything, which is why the recharge rate upgrade is important to get, reducing the cooldown from 12 seconds to 6 with one single upgrade. It's not worth walking in to try to fish for a kill, so look for a health pack to heal up and prepare to charge in again. You'll also want to know your maps as well. Demonite works well in a map that has plenty of cover and places to hide in for a flanking charge. You can also do some advanced charging techniques such as charge stalling which is super convenient as opposed to hiding at a far corner of the area. Take note of places where health packs can spawn as well as any escape routes should you need to run away at any point. If there are any tanks in the mission, you'll want to start targeting them as they arrive. Anytime a small robot tries to get by, kill them to give yourself a critical boost and focus down the tank. The skull cutter is the best weapon to use against tanks for its random crits, but you can still do decent damage without it. You'll just have to rely on the crit boost more for killing it quickly. If you have a solo tank buster on the team, like a flog pyro, you can choose to ignore it. As for the blimp tanks themselves, you should not bother with them at all. You can switch to the base jumper and sticky jumper to land on top, but this should be the last thing Demonite would have to do in the wave. Just leave your teammates to deal with it if possible. Lastly, I want to discuss dealing with melee robots like Bat Scouts, Demonites, and Samurai Demos. The problem with these guys is that you can't build melee resistance, so Demonite will be the most vulnerable here. Bat Scouts can be problematic if you can't keep up with their speed and sporadic dodging. Against Demonites, you want their shield charge to be on cooldown before going in. Their shield has a cooldown of 12 seconds, but if they use a splendid screen, they have a cooldown of 9 seconds. This is the best time window to kill them before it refreshes. The same applies for the larger Samurai Demos, however, they're a lot more dangerous. They deal 98 damage on hit and jump high into the air to charge every 10 seconds and their attacks don't cancel their charge duration. They'll die in one hit with a Zatoichi, however this is very risky if you're being chased. If you're not using it, it's best to have a crit boost before dealing with these guys because they're a lot more tankier with 650 health. If you're fighting giant robots using melees, it can be a breeze if you're constantly outside of their melee range. But sometimes you won't have this luxury. Captain Punch for example has extra swing speed on his gauntlets. There is this extremely short window where you can land a swing with Without getting hit. However, this is extremely difficult to execute consistently over a long period of time, and I can't imagine being able to pull this off in a public session. The other option then would be to use Ubercharge Canteens, which, let's be honest, is the more practical solution despite everything I said previously. All in all, Demonite's gameplay loop is basically this. Charge in. Get a kill and get crit boosted. Kill as many robots as you can. Reset. That's the ideal gameplay anyway. In most cases, you're just mincemeat. I've given you the best possible loadout for Demonite. I went over all of his upgrades, I've talked about how important damage breakpoints are for Demonite, and I went over the best route to upgrade him. Valve made these upgrades accessible to Demonite, and he's still the worst class to play in MVM. Okay, not worst class, but rather the hardest class to play extremely well. You really need to have a full grasp on Demonite before reaching this level of play, and even then, he's outmatched by other classes. Demonite is a good crowd clearer, sure, but he cannot keep up with the likes of Soldier, Pyro, and Demo Man when the missions are designed to be challenging. Demonite's gimmick requires killing robots to buff himself, but sometimes those robots can be killed by someone else, preventing Demonite from triggering his on-kill effects. Compare this to Pyro. Pyro has to close the gap between their targets like Demo Man, but it's far easier easier for them to deal damage and clear crowds much faster while staying alive with their high mobility. 
Pyro is also strong against giants thanks to his flamethrower's air blast or his phlogistonator's crit boost, but Demonite really isn't despite his own crit boost upgrade. Because he's close range and how strong and tough giants are, Demonite is very likely to die fast, so he's kind of forced to slice up small robots while his team deals with giants. Demonite also has bad synergy with Spy as well, because their gameplay overlaps with one another. Spy wants to get behind robots in order to deal damage, but the problem is, Demonite also wants to do this too. Because of his presence on the front lines, giants are much more likely to target Demonite, which can disrupt Spy from getting his backstabs in. And even worse, if Demonite comes into contact with Spy while under fire, there's a very good chance that the Spy is going to die or be forced to cloak out. What also makes Demonite worse to play is that not only is he dependent on money, but his performance is also based on how the mission uses robots. Take for example, Tin Can Termination. His mission has waves that sends out large amount of robots all at once, and all those robots are going to target Demonite and he's going to die extremely fast. Not only that, but there are also robots that can inflict crowd control debuffs, like these loose cannon demos that ignore your push force upgrade, or these gas passer pyros that inflict slow, that completely stops your shield charge from activating. Here's another example, Hell Overdrive. Parts of this mission sends out a line of giants and very little amounts of common robots. Like I said before, without a reliable crit boost and how strong these giants are at close range, it's hard for Demonite to deal damage while staying alive, and at some point, he's gonna have to snort some uber canteens. I can list a lot of missions and waves where Demonite is just completely dog shit. But to keep this short, I'll tell you the red flags that show that you're gonna have a bad time as Demonite. Expert mission. Low money. Spammy waves. Giant spam. Crowd control robots. Battalions backup robots. Forced to buy uber canteens. Boss robots. Titan bosses. Yeah, good luck trying to deal damage to this thing. And yeah, those are the things that stop Demonite from working. But does everything I say in this video still make Demonite worth playing in MVM? No. But at the end of the day, it's not about how Demonite is worth playing in Manfred's Machine. It's about how you can make Demonite good in MVM. And hopefully with all I taught you here today, that you can overcome this challenge.